Hello, and welcome to Political Ideologies Part 1. You'll be doing Part 2 tomorrow night for homework. As always, please make sure that you take some form of structured notes while you're listening, and here we go. Tonight's homework is going to focus on the idea of political ideologies. So we'll start by defining what a political ideology is and talk a little bit about the philosophical differences between liberals and conservatives, terms that you hear quite often and that we normally associate with Democrats and Republicans. Uh, we'll also talk about how to plot those beliefs on a traditional political spectrum. We'll go a little bit deeper and talk about some of the social and economic differences between liberals and conservatives. And then we'll try to make it make a little bit more sense by plotting it on a more complex political spectrum so we can see the nuances of these different ideologies. So what the heck is a political ideology? Well, an ideology is simply a set of beliefs or a belief system. And in America, most of us will fall into kind of one or two camps, either liberals or conservatives. Philosophically, liberals and conservatives differ on the idea of change. Liberals tend to be more for change. Conservatives tend to be more for tradition or keeping things the same. Liberals generally are optimistic about the ability of man to improve himself uh, and to uh, improve society. Conservatives are a little more skeptical of the ability of man to improve himself. Religiously, conservatives would be uh, more um, along the lines of, of believing in original sin. And then we have the role of government. Liberals generally believe that more government is better or that government is a way to improve our lives and that conservatives believe that less government tends to be better. Now, this can be a tiny bit confusing if you study American history, because way back in the day, uh, during the time of the American Revolution, the Founding Fathers were considered liberals. They were what we call classic liberals. They were concerned about the power of government. They were angry about King George III in a, in a powerful monarchy, and they believed that the less government, the better. Today, these people would be conservatives. And that's largely because the world has become more liberal over time. So way back in the day, the Thomas Jeffersons of the world were liberal. Today, they would probably fall along the Republican camp as opposed to the Democratic camp. Now, tomorrow we'll talk a little bit more about global and alternative ideologies outside of America. Today, to keep things a little bit simple, we're going to try to focus just on America. So oftentimes you hear about liberals being on the left and conservatives being on the right, or the Democratic Party being a left party and the Republican Party being a right party. Those terms, left and right, actually comes from the French Revolution when those that sat in the National Assembly and supported the monarchy sat on the right and those that were against the power of the monarchy sat on the left. So when we plot these on a political spectrum, on the far left are what we call radicals, uh, in terms of change, those are people that believe in in, in rapid change, uh, kind of blowing up the system and starting over. Liberals believe in, in moderate change and reform. Conservatives tend to be more for tradition. And reactionaries actually are those that do believe in change, but actually believe in change back to the way things used to be. Most Americans actually like to think of themselves as independents or moderates, those that are just left of center or just right of center. Uh, in the green scheme of global politics, though, you can see that uh, there's, there's some more far left and far right viewpoints. Most Americans, you know, in the far left or the far right would still be in the Democratic or Republican camp. There's a few people who consider themselves socialists, think Bernie Sanders who's running for president right now. Uh, no Republicans would call themselves reactionaries. Uh, but uh, obviously you had the communists uh, on, on one hand of the global political spectrum, uh, and you'd have like the fascists in Nazi Germany in the other uh, far end of the political spectrum. But that's getting into tomorrow night's lesson. So we can dig a tiny bit deeper into the social and economic beliefs of liberals and conservatives. Liberals generally believe that government can be used as a tool to improve people's lives, that tax-supported government programs and services are a way to improve society. But in terms of individual affairs, liberals generally believe that the government should stay out. So this means that liberals generally support things like universal health care or government job training programs or federal grants for college, but at the same time believe that the government should decriminalize marijuana, uh, make sure that uh, free speech rights are completely protected, and support a woman's right to an abortion. 
economically, liberals generally are suspicious of businesses and corporations doing the right thing, saying that they need to be regulated and that corporations and the wealthy should pay more in taxes to provide those government programs and services. So in this particular case, liberals fall on the side of economic security as opposed to economic freedom, the opposite of what they believe in society. In terms of conservatives, they tend to believe socially in the importance of tradition and maintaining our sense of our history. They also believe that humans are flawed, again, from a religious perspective, that idea of original sin, and would often fall down on the side of more law and order and security as opposed to individual freedom. This is where we see things get a tiny bit confusing, because normally conservatives are all about getting government out of our lives, but in this particular case, they would support things like the death penalty and tougher crime laws, uh, as well as the government making sure that the rights of the unborn are protected so they would limit the right of a woman to have an abortion. However, in terms of the economy, they're about economic freedom as opposed to economic security. This means they believe in the free market. Laissez-faire, hands-off, that the government should interfere in the economy and regulate the economy and businesses as little as possible, and that people and corporations should be allowed to keep as much of their profit as possible to do what they wish, and government programs and services should be limited to only those that are absolutely necessary. So after digging a tiny bit deeper, we realize that the traditional left-right linear political spectrum simply doesn't work because there are times when liberals do not want the government involved in our lives, and there are actually some times when conservatives do want the government involved in our lives. So here is a model that's a little bit easier to play with. It's a four-quadrant model, and you can see that there's an x-axis and a y-axis. The x-axis to the left and to the right is the government getting totally involved in the economy or totally out of the economy. And on the top on the bottom, the y-axis, you see the government either uh, promoting social equality by getting totally involved or staying completely out of it and letting us do whatever we want. So us economic liberals and social conservatives or social liberals and economic conservatives can now find a little bit more of a home here. Bernie Sanders can hang out in that top left quadrant and the Rand Pauls and some of the Tea Party folks of the world can hang out in that bottom right quadrant and things make just a tiny bit more sense. Make sure you pause this and study it for a second and tomorrow we can choose a few famous political figures and plot them on this to further the concept. For those wanting to dig a tiny bit deeper, here's an interesting infographic that you can pause and examine and look at some of the other issues associated with liberals and conservatives or those on the left and right. And I hope that you took good notes and bring some questions to the class tomorrow. Thanks, everyone, and have a great night.